to make a statement on the shooting of a police officer in North Belfast, which fulfills the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members will be called. All members called will have up to three minutes to speak on the matter. Mr. Beatty. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm sure the House will join me in con condemning the indiscriminate shooting uh, and attempted murder of a police officer uh, in North Belfast. Uh, it was a cowardly act that brings nothing to society and furthers no cause. What it does do, it inflicts misery on a community that has already suffered so much, and all they want to do is live in peace, as we all do. This attack was carried out by thugs, by criminals, by career terrorists. But let's not think of them as some rogue element, because this attempted murder was rooted in one community or the other. It will have taken months in the planning. There will have been intelligence teams to watch the police and watch their movements. There will have been somebody who supplied the gun, somebody who supplied the car. There would have been lookouts, there would have been scouts, not to mention the person who drove the car and not to mention the person who pulled the trigger. And in pulling the trigger, he not just endangered the police officers, but he endangered every single person who was in that forecourt and well beyond. Because high-velocity rounds are indiscriminate. Because they will enter the body through muscle and tissue. It will break bone and it will keep going. It will ricochet off concrete, it will ricochet off structures, it will penetrate walls, it will penetrate windows, and it will penetrate men, women, and children who are in that area. To spray an area with 24 high-velocity rounds is an absolute and utter disgrace, and it is incumbent on all of us here today, and it's good to see all of us represented here today, it is incumbent on us all to have a single and united voice and to watch our language. And when I say watch our language and watch our, watch our words, we do not want to raise tensions in our community. So we have to be careful about what we say. But I will say this, I do want to know where that weapon came from for that shooting yesterday. Was it a new weapon? If so, where from? If it's an old weapon, a decommissioned weapon, then I want to know. And I also want to know if anybody involved, and it will have taken many, anybody who was involved who are on license and has proven that they were involved in this are returned to prison immediately. I ask the member to conclude his remarks. Mr. Speaker, I feel we have failed our country, and we need to support the PSNI in the rule of law and order. Thank you. Call Mr. Nelson McCausland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The event that took place on the Crumlin Road in North Belfast last night was an appalling attempt to murder a police officer, or police officers, in fact. And it is, I think, a chilling and a terrible reminder of those dark days, some of the darkest days, when such attacks were a regular occurrence in Belfast. The reminder both as regards the method that was used and the re reminder also as regards the murderous intent of those who carried out the attack. It's wrong to murder police officers. It's wrong to murder anyone. But it was wrong when it was the old IRA doing it years ago. It was wrong when it was the provisional IRA doing it more recently. And it's wrong today, whatever version of the IRA may be doing it. And our hope and prayer this morning should be for the recovery of the wounded officer, and our thoughts are with him and his family. Such attack on a garage forecourt, where there are people milling around, where there are potentially young people, elderly folk, people out and about their business, as well as the intended target, Anyone could have been cut down, 
and killed on the spot last night. It's reminiscent of the 70s and the 80s in Belfast. And sadly, there are those around today who want to drag us back to a violent past. Now, within recent months, we've seen, I think, an upsurge in violent activity by extreme Republican elements. We've seen bomb devices used. We've seen shootings, particularly in West Belfast and some other parts of Northern Ireland. And it's clear that there has been an increased level of activity on top of the ongoing attacks against police officers and prison officers. Fortunately, on this occasion, the intended target wasn't killed. Uh, fortunately, on the previous occasion when there was an attack on the Crumlin Road uh, not so long ago, the uh, intended victims were not killed. But it is a stark reminder to us of the responsibility of all of us to make sure that those who are responsible for such attacks are brought before the courts. Every support should be given to the police Member in dealing with them remarks. and who should carry out such murderous attacks. Call Mr. Jerry Kelly. And may I join with uh, all the other members I, I presume in the Assembly. I also was an elected representative for North, for North Belfast, uh, personally and, and for Sinn Féin. In the first instance, to hope that this, uh, this young uh, police officer, and I understand he was very young <coughs> in his early 20s, um, a probationer, um, recovers uh, fully from uh, his wounds. Um, he could easily have been talking about a death here today and a family uh, suffering that death instead of, the, hopefully, uh, the recovery that we are going to see. And as other members have said, it could also have been in an open, uh, an open court of a, a garage, uh, other people uh, killed or maimed in that. So let me condemn it absolutely and outright. Let me also say, as a representative for that area, and I think all the representatives for the area will be of one voice in this, is that the people who vote for us, and I mean that right across the board, are absolutely opposed uh, to the people who are involved in this. I would say that the people involved in this are most likely the same people who have attacked their own community, who have killed people within that community, and maimed people within that community in the not so distant uh, past, in fact, in the last uh, number, of, number of months. So I think there is a duty on everyone and anyone who uh, has any information which uh, could lead to the apprehension of those involved should bring that forward uh, immediately, uh, so bring forward that information. And um, I hope, again, that uh, the young man uh, has a full recovery and that we don't have an incident, that these people know that they should get off the backs of both the local community and the overall uh, society of which we belong. Call Ms Nicola Mallon. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise on behalf of the SDLP and the many, many constituents who contacted me last night to express their shock and anger at the despicable gun attack on an officer out on duty uh, trying to serve and protect our community. And I add my voice to the unreserved condemnation of that attack and I would urge anyone with any information, no matter how small it may seem, to please pass that information on to the PSNI. I express here in this House today my best wishes and my concern to that police officer. Indeed, last night when I was speaking with his colleagues at both our local and senior level, I asked that those wishes were passed on and the wishes of the people, many of them in Ardoin and right across North Belfast, who contacted me last night to ask that I would do that for them on their behalf. There are many, many issues which divide us in this House, but it is clear today that there is an issue that unites us. And that is our unreserved condemnation of what took place last night. The truth is, violence has no place in our society. All it serves to do is to create heartache, pain and suffering. And as each and every one of us in this House knows, there are far too many families in our constituencies who endure that pain and suffering on a daily basis. So I think it is right that we stand united and we send that very strong message to those who were behind the attack last night, but importantly, to the people right across North Belfast. We will stand against this, we will stand opposed to this, and we will stand up 
for those who deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Ms. Naomi Long. Speaker, um, first of all, I would like to extend my sympathy and my best wishes to the young officer who was wounded in last night's shooting in North Belfast. I hope that he makes a full recovery, both physically and mentally, from the impact of his injuries, and I want to send good wishes today to him and his family. I also want to extend my best wishes to his colleagues, both those who were at the scene last night, um, but also those throughout Northern Ireland whose sense of safety has been shaken again as they go about serving our community and securing our safety. Mr Speaker, my thoughts are all, also with those members of the public who were in that garage last night going about their business when this reckless attack took place. This was not an attack on an individual police officer or an attack on the PSNI. This was an attack on our entire community. It says all that we need to know about the kind of people who were involved, that they would attempt to kill a person who is serving their community and do so, so with such reckless disregard for the community in which they serve. These people are nothing but despicable cards. They have nothing to offer the people of Northern Ireland. So I focus my thoughts and my best wishes on those like the young officer who was affected, who are wanting to give service to their community and to make it a better place. And I send our best wishes to him today. Well, Ms. Claire Bailey. Speaker, and I'm speaking for all members of the Green Party today um, in joining the calls in condemning the attack that had took place last night. I was very shocked as the news was broke last night um, for many reasons, but I wasn't long home when I seen that breaking news happen. And I wasn't long home from my, my local garage forecourt, but that forecourt is not simply um, a garage, it's also a corner shop for my area. It's where I was going for a pint of milk on a Sunday night. And I'm sure that many people at that garage last night where the attack happened were doing the same. They were getting milk for the fridge, they were getting children's packed lunches, and they were filling up their cars. It was a public area. There's absolutely no excuse for what took place. It is not heroic to rain bullets in these circumstances. It was a terrible attack on a public servant and the wider public. But what will be heroic is when that police officer, and I hope that he makes a full recovery, and I hope that he returns to his duties, in trying to do all he can to protect our community and make us safer, that when he returns to duty, he will be the hero, and I wish him all the best. It's good that all members in this House can stand in unity and unite and stand against those who want to bring fear and violence into our communities. Thankfully, the officer is in a stable condition, but things could have turned out very differently, either for him and anybody else in the vicinity. The local community are very angry at what's happened, and we must continue to work to make sure that this does not happen again. Thank you. Call Mr. Jerry. Mr. Speaker, and uh, the futility of yesterday's shooting on the Crumlin Road uh, should be clear to everybody. And nothing, nothing can be achieved from carrying out such attacks. And people before profit are calling for an immediate cessation uh, to all power military actions. Mr. Speaker, no amount of rhetoric can hide behind the fact that armed struggle is a dead end. And we urge those involved in these reckless attacks to ask, ask themselves a simple question. What has been achieved? Decades of armed struggle by the provisional IRA did not end a victory. The much smaller campaign carried out today is even less likely to achieve anything. Needless suffering and the imprisonment of another generation of people is all that will result. And, Mr. Speaker, politicians from the establishment parties will, will queue to take turns to condemn this attack and the shoot of course. But their, words, their words will ring hollow, given the millions of pounds that they are funneling to paramilitary-linked organisations, particularly within loyalism. So, too, will the calls from senior PSNI officials to challenge the scourge of paramilitarism. And was it not, Mr. Speaker, only a few months ago, that the BBC aired a damning documentary that showed a cosy relationship between the PSNI and paramilitaries is still alive and well in the new Northern Ireland. Plenty of condemnation, therefore, but little consistency uh, from the establishment. People before profit, on the other hand, are consistent in our approach. 
We want to see an end to all paramilitarism. Attacks like the one on the Crumlin Road will only reinforce division and distract from the pressing need for a united movement that will challenge the corruption and austerity of the establishment. Thank you. Call Mr. Jim Mallist. Mr. Speaker, my primary thoughts are with the officer who uh, was subject of this vile attack last night, and we wish him well and a full recovery. It's a reminder to us of how the police and security services stand between us and those with murder in their heart. And though this officer happily escaped death, that was no thanks to those who set out patently with murder in their heart, using weaponry, most likely to occasion murder on even a mass scale. Uh, so it is a quite shocking situation. But let it be said, it is no more shocking, no more vile, no more unjustified than the terrorists of the IRA or anyone else who for years inflicted such horror. Those who with murder in their heart went out and did murder. And I listened today to condemnation from Mr. Jerry Kelly, himself a convicted terrorist, who to this day, to this day, has not acknowledged that his terrorism was wrong, that it was unjustified, it was uncalled for, but rather still honours and glories in, as does his party, those very acts of terror. And what does that do today? Not just speaks to their character, but it speaks to today's terrorists, gives them succor, provides a crutch for them, and causes them to conclude that if it was okay for the provost, it's okay for them. And until those who represented that previous terrorism acknowledge and renounce it, then that crutch is going to continue to be provided. Could I make one other point? If, and I hope someone is, and maybe hopefully more than one, made amenable for this crime, I trust when they are arrested, they will not be easily, as was the person charged with the attempted murder of David Black, admitted to bail. And their bail terms will not be made so easy if they are admitted to bail. And they shouldn't be in the first place. The that will simply have gone. There should be no bail for anyone charged with an offence such as this. Call Ms. Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome today's matter of the day, um, and I appreciate Mr. Beatty for tabling it. Um, I also welcome the widespread condemnation that has appeared from all sides of this House, because rightly so, Mr. Speaker, this uh, issue um, uh, serves to unite us. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have no doubt that this at attack was intended to kill. Thankfully, the officer um, uh, is in a stable condition, but we could have been hearing of a loss of life this morning, because this is not just an attack on our police service. This is an attack on the community. This is an attack on our country. It was reckless. Multiple automatic uh, rounds fired into a public space. I am disgusted. Mr. Speaker, there remains a continued threat against police officers and prison officers in Northern Ireland. And I think we can't become complacent. And whilst there is political instability happening in Northern Ireland right now, this threat has continued right through that. And others will see this as an opportunity, an opportunity to take advantage. And I think if I can give a clear message to this Assembly today, is that we, as elected representatives, can ensure that they don't take advantage of that, that we do stand united. Um, whilst I stand here as the representative for East uh, London Dairy, I also have an interest as Justice Minister, and I have been keeping in close contact with the Secretary of State and the Chief Constable on this issue. Um, it's something that does concern me. From the outset of the political instability, I was always concerned that someone would take advantage, and I hope this isn't um, an example of that. Um, and I certainly think um, it, it's, 
if we can move forward, we have to move forward in the right space because we can't return to the dark days of the past, Mr. Speaker. And I think um, we, we all should be condemning uh, that this most dreadful incident today. Um, on, on another note, I, I want to um, just pay tribute uh, to the police service in Northern Ireland. In my experience as Justice Minister, particularly, I've seen the hard work they do. They put their lives on the line every day for us in service of the people of Northern Ireland, and we can't <coughs> underestimate that. For someone as cowardly to take um, an opportunity as, as these despicable individuals have done so last night is, is, is nothing short of disgusting. And I think um, uh, that's the clear message that we have to send out as the United Assembly today. Thank you. Call Mr. William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I join with others in condemning the attack last night, a murderous attack to kill a police officer in my constituency? Just before half past seven last night, I heard the shots, I heard the sirens, and then the helicopter. And then it was very clear something had seriously gone wrong. I spoke to police and I started receiving calls from constituents and I, I heard very clearly that there had been a shooting at the Edenderry uh, filling station on the Crumlin Road. I visited the site and I have to say I spoke to some of the officers' uh, colleagues who were visibly shaken because they had been serving with him only earlier that day. Some of them who had lockers were beside his in the station. I spoke to constituents who were there on the scene and today I want to express my revulsion at this attack, send my thoughts to the officer, to his family and to uh, the, the, his colleagues who are so clearly worried at this time. This is the first shooting of a police officer for eight years in Northern Ireland. Clearly an attempt by evil people to kill police but also to kill the general public. Totally random and indiscriminate as others have said, gunfire into a forecourt of a garage in a built up area with Edenderry Gardens to its left and Edenderry Lofts to its right. Gunfire across a main arterial route in our city into a forecourt with 12 members of the general public and the police uh, there at that time. This morning I visited the manager of the petrol station's home and she told me that, th that there are gunshots inches from gas tanks and fuel pumps. So we could have been looking at real carnage, not just in terms of murder, that this police officer could well have had to face and his colleagues, but the general public, but explosion from reckless, inhumane, evil people who frankly have to be brought to justice and removed from society. No politician and no party, and I'm pleased to hear today, should give them any succor or support or credence at, at any time ever. Mr. Speaker, there's also a clear disruption to the business life in North Belfast this morning. But good, these people don't think of that. The disruption to that business, that they lost the night's trading last night, and today the garage will remain closed all day, as was the Crumlin Road this morning again, and traffic a chaos ensued. Mr. Speaker, we all must stand together against violence, against intimidation, and against threats. I am concerned that this sort of violence follows a vacuum that's been created in Northern Ireland, and that evil people might fill it. That is a danger I think we face, and that is a reason why this community, this assembly, and our people in Northern Ireland are looking for leadership. We must all come together to show these people that they can't win, they won't win. The people of Northern Ireland do not want to go back to the battle we'll days. We want remarks. to see Northern Ireland moving forward, and we want to see an end to this evil from evil people. Call Mr. Ross Hussey. Speaker, and I begin by passing my best wishes to the police officer who was seriously injured last night, and to his colleagues in the police service of Northern Ireland. There is no doubt we will all sit here today and condemn this murderous attack, which could have resulted in the death not only of a police officer, but of civilians, as has been highlighted by my colleague Captain Beatty. This attack clearly was not something that happened on a whim. And throughout the last term of the Assembly and this term of this Assembly, we have had incidents throughout Northern Ireland. In my own constituency of West Tyrone and in the neighbouring constituency of Foyle, the police service of Northern Ireland recovered many weapons and explosives, all belonging to terror groups, all belonging to terror groups that don't have the guts to give themselves a name, who at times call themselves the Continuity IRA or whatever. I have a name for them, and that is cowards. That's all they have ever been, and that's all they ever will be, are cowards. 24 years ago today, a 21-year-old Royal Ulster Constabulary officer 
was shot dead in Londonderry, 21 years old and his whole life in front of him. And Constable Michael Ferguson was done to death by the same sort of individual that tried to kill the police officer last night in Belfast. There is no difference. And for all I know and for all we know, the same weaponry has been used. For years I have been asking the police for information on weaponry that has been recovered and the history of that weaponry. And for some reason that information has never been released. Why? Can that weaponry be traced back to the IRA? Is there a possibility that groups who were IRA took their weaponry with them? Of course there is. And that element of collusion between the IRA, the provisional IRA, and the ABCDEFG IRA is here to today. And that weaponry must all be surrendered to the police. This is my last opportunity to speak to this Assembly. Some of you may be glad to know I am retiring from politics. But I hope that in the next Assembly, no politician has to stand up and condemn a murderous attack on a police officer. Anyone who is prepared to wear the uniform should get the support of this Assembly. Member and well. I, I pledge my support to the Police Service of Northern Ireland, incorporating the Royal Ulster Constabulary GC, and I hope everybody else does. Call Mr. Edwin Poots. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, last night was a stark reminder of what many of us grew up with in this country and what many of us heard in the news reports all of the time, and that was of murders, attempted murders, uh, taking place. Firstly, I would like to wish the police officer well in his recovery, and we are thankful that um, his injuries are, are not life-threatening. This has not been a success for those who uh, set out last night. Success for them is the same outcome as happened with Constable Carl, with David Black and with Adrian Ismay and indeed other civilians who have been targeted by the same individuals. But it stands as a very stark reminder to us all. This time ten years ago, we were discussing with our members and with um, the wider public uh, the outcome of St Andrews and whether we should proceed uh, into government with Sinn Féin, which was a hugely difficult decision for us. But we took that decision because we did not want to go back we wanted to go forward. And we are now in a similar circumstance in Northern Ireland where perhaps others have greater problems. But the question that has to be posed is, are we going to go back or are we going to go forward? Instability creates vacuums, and in vacuums, evil people step into those vacuums. And I think it is incumbent upon all of us, each and every one of us in this House, to commit ourselves to ensuring that we continue to provide a stability for all of the problems and all of the wrongs of Stormont. We continue to provide stability and we continue to provide leadership and we continue to be there for the people of Northern Ireland because we have had an awful, horrible, bloody past that I had to grow up in and I don't want my children or my grandchildren to grow up in it. I want these people who carried this out last night to be marginalised, sidelined, incarcerated and serve very long sentences for what they do. Not to, create, not to be given the opportunity uh, to actually go out there and carry out more of this in the name of Ireland or of any other cause. Call Mr. Trevor Lund. Mr. Lund, you have two minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I join with everybody else who has spoken in utter condemnation of a cowardly attack on a police officer, attempted murder, bullets sprayed across a petrol forecourt. I don't think whoever did this really cared if there was collateral damage, somebody else injured, or a gas tank, or a fuel explosion. That, that they're indifferent to these kind of things. I understand that from the media this morning that 43 years ago there was a, an attack virtually on the same spot, and two civilians were killed. Uh, so in 43 years on, we're still seeing bullets flying on the Crumlin Road, shot by somebody who clearly has a different view of the future of the state of Northern Ireland at the present time and has nothing whatsoever to offer our society in terms of progress or a sensible thought. Mr Speaker, the, the, the PSNI nowadays can operate with, with reasonable 
freedom in terms of their own security. They're, they're able to use petrol stations and takeaways. And the reason for that is that they have achieved the confidence of the community. And the community generally has accepted that they operate without fear or favour. That, that actually assists a dissident, if it was a dissident, in, in terms of being able to mount this kind of attack. I, I completely agree with Mr Beatty when he said that one person couldn't have done this on their own. And the Chief Constable said the same thing this morning. It has to be a gang, it has to be organised. And um, I do hope that the person or persons responsible can be brought to justice. I pray for the full recovery of the young police officer. I hope it doesn't put his colleagues off in any way. I hope it doesn't put off other young people who would like to join the force, because that's the last thing we need, and that would be a success for the people who did this. Thank you. Members, that concludes the item. The first